Alright, hello everyone! Let's make another VR scene today in the latest Unreal Engine 5.2 update. Up until this point on the channel, I've been operating off of a laptop, and despite all the crashes, it did good work. Those days are now over. I've upgraded to the humbling RTX 4090, and it is an absolute game changer for 3D art capabilities. In this video, I'm going to stress test the new system with Nanite and Lumen in VR to achieve some insane graphical results. Later, we're going to kill the lights and set up a flashlight for a cool VR horror scene. So yeah, let's get into it. First of all, I'd like to let you know that this video has been sponsored by Cascadeur. This is a powerful 3D keyframe animation software with AI-assisted tools to make key poses and physical-based animation quickly. It's easy to rig and easy to add life to your animations with Cascadeur's full range of 3D animation tools. Use my link in the description and code 1WQHB8 to receive 15% off of your order of Cascadeur. This is the best way to support the channel and get started making awesome, believable 3D animation. Alright, and without further ado, into the VR projects. Turns out I've already covered getting your project set up, I'll link that video somewhere. But for now, here's a quick run through of the project settings to double check and ensure Nanite and Lumen are working in the VR level. Default RHI, DirectX 12. SM6, make sure that's enabled. Allow static lighting, uncheck that. Okay, and then next thing, forward shading. Get rid of it, uncheck that. For your reflection captures, you can turn these down. All right, and uh, that ought to do it. So restart your engine and we'll be back. All right, so hopefully you got all that. Restarting the engine and applying all those settings, the basis of getting Nanite and Lumen to work are all set. So now let's talk about... For the lighting, we're gonna add in our own directional light and skylight, both of these set to movable. And then an exponential height fog with volumetrics enabled. Under this, we can set the fog color and density, which establishes the look of the scene. And that's all there is to it for our lighting setup. Once that's ready, we're ready to build an environment. I had to establish a palette of assets, which began with the Megascans library, all downloads at nanite level quality. Browsing assets is a fun part of the process that's kind of hard to translate to camera. Quixel's gigantic library of scanned models is inspiring entirely on its own. Scrolling through different collections helps build out a scene in my head as I imagine how assets can fit together. Oh, and I also threw in this pack of old ass farmhouses and western props from the Epic Games Store. Starting off in the editor with a quick tip I learned this week, we need to make some ground, and to do this we're making use of displacement. Materials applied to a surface are flat, so using Unreal Engine's modeling tools we're going to add some needed depth to this surface. If you don't see the modeling tools, they can be enabled under the Plugins tab. To start this process off, I take the Megascans texture and apply it to a large rectangle. By itself, this rectangle doesn't have enough subdivisions for the displacement to be able to do a whole lot, so we go over under the Mesh Ops tab and hit Remesh. Here you can indicate a large number and add a bunch of extra polygons to the mesh. Since we're stress testing today, I set this number pretty high. Once that's done, you can then go over to the Deform tab and find the Displace tool. If you're using a Megascans material, this neon green looking texture acts as the displacement map. So plug that into the displacement, and as you can see, we've got some actual depth to the plane. So we adjust those numbers down so it's not so extreme, and this will act as a lovely ground plane. Between this as a basis and our selection of assets, it's time to make that level. So let's put it all together. I didn't have my mic turned on when I first tested out the level, but you'll have to take my word for it, I kind of flipped my lid. Head exploded everywhere. I can't believe first and foremost how well it runs, even with recording software going. 
And secondly, being able to abuse high quality assets for VR results in some pretty awesome scenes. Unreal's lighting, those volumetrics and mega scans all coming together really make for a stunning effect. I think back to games like The Lab and their incredible photo scan environments, and being able to make something remotely to that standard on free software is kind of unfathomable. Teleportation movement is pretty dated, but it gets the job done for exploring these environments. Although now that I'm able to run VR so smoothly, I'm significantly more motivated to figure out proper locomotion. But for this week, since it was running so well and the lighting system is so satisfying, I thought being able to use a flashlight in VR would be really cool. We're just going to attach a spotlight to a stick and make it grabbable. Here's how to do that. So we're using this guy here. We've applied the material. This is all just off of Sketchfab. Okay, so the way I did it is I created a new blueprint class. We call it an actor. We call this BP underscore tutorial. I can type flashlight. So we're gonna add a static mesh. Static mesh. Flashlight. Okay, we wanna set the scale uniform, cut this down to size. We are then going to enable simulate physics, add a spotlight, take that spotlight there, and then I turned the intensity to 20,000. That turned out pretty good. Once you drag it out, under blueprints you can see there's this grab component. This can be added to just about anything. So we go to the tutorial flashlight, we're going to add, search for that grab component, add it, and just like that, you got your flashlight set up. So there I was testing it all out. Flashlights feel really good in VR, so let's switch over to some night lighting in the main scene. To do this, I use the Dynamic Volumetric Sky Pack, since nighttime lighting with a default Unreal Engine setup can be a bit difficult. With this pack though, I was able to set the weather type to overcast, and the time to deep into the night. However, to really make some advanced darkness, I turned the moonlight intensity way down. So this night lighting in tandem with the flashlight effect comes out looking like this. Having a handheld light and seeing the realistic shadows cast really demonstrates the power and potential of Lumen and Nanite, especially for VR. Walking around the level with the flashlight felt shockingly real for something made in just a couple afternoons. I could really go on about how cool this all feels, it can be hard to translate the feeling of VR to video. Nighttime lighting in a flashlight was largely an afterthought, but turns out this is a really cool effect worth reusing in future projects. It's got a sort of Resident Evil vibe, which I'm pretty excited about. And being able to run it is such a huge step up from the laptop, thanks to this new system. I'm going to be doing my best to be worthy of this ridiculous GPU power. So that's it. Unreal Engine is just getting better and better for VR development. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you even caught some inspiration along the way. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.